Ooh, look at the rain, look at the rain. It rained during the night. Two. I think that uh, we are one of the only ones working. And as far as loggers go, and let me see if I can get in here. I'll probably be stuck. Maybe not. So, what happens is, is when, see we worked yesterday, look at the fog, all day in the rain, and, and uh, so we're loading these contract trucks, and so we'll end up, hopefully we won't get flooded out with contract trucks, because we're only, we don't have but just a little bit of wood left to cut here on this job. And so we're going to run out of wood here pretty quick because we're probably going to be moving this next week here. And so I don't know. I see one truck down there. There's going to be more down there. Ain't no telling how many. Good grief. So I don't mess up often, but when I do, it's usually bad. <laughs> I'm thinking about the Dos Equis dude right now. That's who I'm thinking about. So you're wondering, what did I do? What did I screw up? Oh my goodness. All right, so yesterday, I had my, my truck serviced. Uh, Anna Kate took it to the shop for me and got it serviced. And oh, that little oil filter thing that I got that I showed y'all here in a few videos ago, the mechanic that did it sent me a message he said get me the link to that thing and get it now he said that thing worked wonders he said we've got to have one of them you screw it in the top of that oil filter and then you can turn the filter over sideways and it won't let it leak out so anyhow she took it up there so i was in my jeep yesterday and so i have two phones i have my normal iphone and then i also have an iphone this for nothing but uh, printing tickets where I print our load tickets to get these trucks into the mill. Every truck that leaves here, I print them a ticket. I have a printer in my loader and then that phone links to that printer through Bluetooth and I, I fill out the ticket, put all the information on it and then I print it and they don't have to do anything. They got It's got a barcode on it. Some of them's got a QR code on them and when they get to the mill they just scan them at the mill and it's it's a done deal and then at the end of the day then i sync that phone to the company that we work for and it sends all of them tickets at one time just like that to headquarters and so they can see what we've done and they know what everybody knows everything right then is what it does it's, it's actually a pretty cool deal so if i load say like yesterday 22 loads was loaded all that information goes back to headquarters just that quick like that so anyhow this i got in yesterday and i got everything out of my jeep put it in my truck except for the ticket phone the ticket phone was in the, the jeep has a little cubby hole in the dash right there i had that in my interior is black in there too didn't even think about it, it was raining moved everything out of the jeep real quick anybody that goes between two vehicles knows how bad that sucks <clears throat> so i even went out there this morning of course it was dark when i left i went out there this morning looked in my jeep one more time to make sure i had gotten everything which i had except for the ticket phone i got up here i never missed it till i got up here and went to get out of my truck a while ago right off the bat got trucks stacked in here and i ain't got the ticket phone <laughs> so what we've been doing is is uh i'll track up close enough to where kevin can send the data to he can link to the printer in my loader from where he's sitting if i track right there in the middle and so these 
these trucks that I've loaded, he sent the data to the printer for me from him. So my dad, uh, he was already on his way up here this morning. I was going to get Anna Kate, and I was going to give her a pen, because she's a bad little joker, man, with directions and getting, getting, finding me or wherever I need her at, you know. All, all I got to do is just send that little hair for a pen, son, and she'll be here. So I, I got her out of bed and was going to get her to bring it up here to me. But I called Dad real quick, and he had done left the shop. So he made a U-turn, went back to my house, jumped out, ran up there to my Jeep, grabbed the phone uh, out of my Jeep. And uh, so he's out here. So I'm standing on the ground. As soon as this truck pulls out, Dad's going to give me the ticket phone and all will be well back in the world of TDK logging. Not only that, but when we got started off this morning right down there, Derek slid off the road in the service truck and completely blocked the road. And we had to drag him out with a bulldozer. It's one of them days, people. It's one of them days. And look at, look at it, look how nasty it is. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We'll win the battle. We may take some some licks trying to win it, but we're gonna we're, we're gonna win it. It's it's gonna take a little bit. Derek's up there at the road cutting right now too. Kevin here. I'm kind of watching that truck up there too. So that when he pulls out, I'll be ready for Dad when he comes in. Cause there's a, I think there's about four trucks out there on the road waiting to get loaded. We'll see. old rough ones man anytime you get around around a road edge or anything like these trees that are around this road you get into those rough trees like that because them because see Derek's cutting right up there at the road up there the reason why is because that sunlight can hit the side of that tree if that tree's out there growing in the woods where sunlight cannot hit cannot hit nothing but the top of the tree you won't have those old those old big old whirl limbs and all that stuff in it and jacked up uh, tops and stuff but well if you stick a tree out in the open like those pines right there if you can see them on the on the, this side left hand side of them look at all the limbs on them that's because they were up against the road and the sunlight could hit them those limbs go nuts on those things that's the reason why when you thin you can't you don't need to thin a track out too thin because you'll you'll mess the trees up on it when that sunlight hits the side of them all right, that truck's pulling out. Oh my goodness. I hate being behind too, man. Heck, damn it. You ever heard the old saying, behind eight ball? We started off behind eight ball today. Bad. Oh, and then I was gonna pull down there and see about dragging Derek out. I could see he was in a ditch this morning. And I went in the ditch right there. I got down there to where I did pull down there to where he was. There wasn't no way I was gonna pull him out where he was, where he had done sunk down at. It wasn't happening. I didn't even hook to him. I just put it in reverse, and I backed my happy little butt right back up here and park. <laughs> With my head held low because I never forgot the ticket phone. Kevin's on the radio. Those pulpwood pieces right there, those are uh, top, the top pieces out of those log trees. Those are all cut 19 and a half foot long. They don't have to be, they just have to be longer than 14 foot. They can be 
they don't need to be a little shorter than 14 foot and we cut them 19 and a half because that's what fits our trailers real well okay so we got a truck this is a this is a contract truck fixing to come by me right here I'm gonna move over here film him when he comes by these are the top pieces out of those biggins that I cut down the other day with a chainsaw out there with the power line. Look at the grain on them things. Sweet. Good old gross stuff. We'll see how many trucks come in here right quick. There's three right there. There's my pole trailer. Oh, he got my phone. I hear you, man. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Yeehaw! We in business now, baby. All right. Let's do this. Now I gotta print some tickets right quick. Alright. Yeah, it's uh ten thirty right now. I've loaded uh eleven already. We started off behind the eight ball, but uh through hard work got back in front of it, got everything kinda under control of the pile here over there and over here I've got a good pile stacked right there so doing pretty good on uh, on all of that y'all know uh, about two weeks ago I was talking about you know studying gimbals and everything well I, I made a order to B&H today I've got uh, if you're interested in Manfrotto stuff like tripods and stuff like that Every year, Manfrotto offers some really nice rebates on, on all their stuff, and I'm a huge fan of Manfrotto tripods. Anything that's got Manfrotto's name on it's really good, but they, I ordered two more Manfrotto tripods today. I have one in my truck. It's an 055 that I keep in there. Uh, I like it out here in the woods because I set a $4,000 camera on it, and I don't have to worry about the wind blowing it over or whatever. Nothing's going to happen to it, you know, unless the machine runs over. But it's a little bit too heavy to travel with, uh, you know, like an airport and things like that. So I ordered two more uh, 190 Go, uh, this a Manfrotto today. They got both of them's got a $60 rebate. I believe it's 60 on both of them. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'll keep the one in my truck, I'm going to have one in my study, and I'm going to have one in my shop. That way, I don't have to pull my tripod in and out of my truck. I just take a camera, slap it on, bam, I'm ready to film. And because, I mean, you, I got to have two or three of everything to, to kind of get by at, at this point. But I got them coming, and I studied the gimbals. I talked about getting a gimbal. Uh, for the way that I film and the way like just like right now a gimbal is not exactly gonna work for me it would smooth the video out like crazy but it's just not gonna be feasible for me to tote it and carry it with me just like on this camera I just bumped the camera on my hand right there all right we're at uh, 13 lows we're man, about to start to death it's a uh, straight up straight up noon gonna eat right quick I do have a truck sitting out there on the road uh, waiting to load and that's dad so I ain't worried about him we're gonna go ahead and and eat and, and I'll jump back up there get him loaded so all we need is uh six more at this point to hit a hundred and if all the trucks roll back through here uh, we're gonna end up with 
a little over a hundred some change there so uh, that'll be good and of course the difference between this week and last week is is this week we've done it in uh, five days last week it took us six days to do it and dealing with the rain man see the trucks are still pulling this road though the thing about this road is it can dry and you run the grader on it you'll never even see this right here it'll be completely back like normal like it did look all right let's see two more just went by dad's still sitting out there on the road he told them to go around him I like a little more orange here and i'll get up there and get them turned that's that's dad he's coming in now he's coming in behind him he's gonna let them load in front of him y'all watch that hole right there he's gonna be going through here just to See, even the chunks on that truck right there is still cleared at high center. That Volvo there, the pole trailer, he graded that center. He drug it pretty bad when he went through there. The dad cleared it. giving out on us it's done it's gotten tired right there in that spot uh just had to push dad through that hole we'll have to push the rest of them through that hole to get them out he got he's up there binding now and then that other truck will come in here that's it 101 got 20 today our road is uh, about done right here. They're talking about us getting some wintry stuff over the weekend there. So we'll just have to see what happens. If we get some snow and ice, it's going to do this old ground on in on us as wet as it is right now. A lot of, a lot of fighting and battling, boy, I'm going to tell you. A lot of fighting and battling to, uh, to pull this one off this week. That's for sure. For sure. Yep. So we hit the hundred loads again this week, and we did it in five days this 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 week. Like I said earlier, instead of six. The thing that uh, you got to remember too, and I said it in the other day's video about hitting hundred loads. Chad skidded all by himself, all by himself. But you also got to remember too, that's one skidder running. That's just one cutter running, Derek. That's just one processor running, Kevin. And that's just one loader running me. Uh, so can't nobody boast because it takes a lot of trees to load 100 loads. You figure those loads are going to be running averaging 27 tons. Some of our truck can, some of our trucks can get up 29 tons in, uh, on a load, wood weight. And so if you figure that over the thing it takes a lot of wood to make 100 loads and there's a lot of handling of that wood to do that you know a lot of i don't know how many loads of pine put wood tops i loaded this week it was a bunch it was a bunch of of hardwood put wood uh just scrub stuff that we bring up that comes up with the pine you know um we are going to have to be moving this next week. We're going to wrap this job up that we're on, and we're going to be moving to another location. Uh, we got weather coming this week, too, that should have hit yesterday. And so that's going to affect us a little bit. And also moving, we're going to lose some time moving. Um, not sure what the terrain is going to be like on this next job. I think the hills are going to be a little bit worse. The duels will be coming off the 635 probably. 
And so we'll just kind of, uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Um, logging is, is all about overcoming challenges and everything is, I mean, life, everything's about overcoming challenges. Uh, logging's is a lot of quick thinking on your feet when something pops up real fast on you. So we'll just, uh, we've had two good weeks in a row, but last year, 2018, we were more than 500 loads off from what we needed to haul. And uh, that's a lot of money and we're still in the hole. We not, we're not out of the hole yet. So we're gonna keep fighting and scratching and clawing and battling and everything like that. And y'all just keep on watching the videos. I, I appreciate uh, appreciate all y'all tuning in and and watching what the TDK guys do uh, uh, day day to day. For those y'all who don't know, they're new subscribers. It's TDK Logging. We're based right here in Columbus, Mississippi. It's where we're out of. We've logged forever. Uh, the uh, the the TDK stands for Tim, Kevin, and Derek, and but this my dad owns it. It's that's just a name that he called it. So it's dad's. It's not mine or nobody else's, but dad's. And so I just I work for dad. I load trucks is what I do. I'm the oldest of the three boys. Uh, uh, it's me, and then Kevin's the middle brother, and Derek is the youngest. And then we got a sister too that uh, takes care of all the bookkeeping. Her name's Samantha in the office there. And uh, so that's what it's that's what it's all about. So appreciate all y'all. I do, I do, I do. As I always say at the end of my videos, I end them with later taters. So we'll see y'all later taters.